just think sometimes for sure we just pick up stuff. We just pick up stuff during the week and it weighs us down and it bogs us down and it, it throws us off a trajectory or, or our path or, or, or something that we're on uh, to be more, uh, to be more like, like Christ, to be who he created us to be. Um, this is the fourth uh, week we're talking about Crave. Um, for some of us, uh, if you're here for the first time to the chapel, we have been as a church uh, on a 21-day fast. And uh, for a lot of us, this was day 21. Um, for me, it's day 20. And I can tell you, I'm about to be done preaching because I think tomorrow is going to come quicker. Okay? Um, I can't think. I just have meatballs and sausage in my brain right now. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, so uh, it has been uh, an incredible journey. I want to do something a, a, little, bit, uh, a little bit different today uh, or tonight. Uh, I just want to share a little bit um, on what, what God was showing me. Let me move this thing over a little bit. Uh, in, in the 21 days, in 21 days of what we've been saying is removing um, something that cost us something. In this case, it's been food. A lot of times, uh, a lot of people, for, because of medical conditions, had to do different things. And uh, people were fasting social media. People were fasting some different things. But as a guide, we were using a Daniel fast taken from Daniel chapter um, uh, 10. So um, what I found um, in, like, uh, depriving my body of the things that I crave, uh, coffee, uh, you can have a meeting without coffee, which was weird for me, which was, it was like, no, you can't. That meeting is going to be horrible. Um, so you can do that, you know. Um, and then I didn't time some things out like exactly the way I should have during the fast. There were like some things, some, some gatherings of different pastors that I went to. I was in a coaches, the chapel coaches about 15 different churches across the country, uh, church planters. And uh, I went to one of those dinners and lunches, and it was horrible. Um, it was just, no, I'm not, I'm fine, I'm fine. I was so irritable after that. Uh, and then uh, I went to a hockey game, uh, which was horrible. Because um, <laughs> you can't eat anything. You can't eat anything. I snuck in some peanut things, and everybody was looking at me like, hey, where'd you buy? I didn't buy them. I snuck them in. You know what I mean? So it was weird. It was weird. It was like that. I'm really happy. Uh, the whole thing is coming to an end uh, to a certain extent because spring training's here. Uh, thank you, Jesus. And I, there's no way. There's no way I would have made it. There's no way. You, go, you don't go to a ballpark. It's like going to church and not talking about God. You don't go to a ballpark and not eat a hot dog. That's ridiculous. So we did time that out the right way. All right? So, uh, but I learned a couple of things about myself. Uh, I, 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 try to, I, try to, uh, I try to really learn every day. I really do try to learn every day. Um, it's just the way I'm wired. Um, I love learning. Uh, I love having a team here at the church that, are, uh, that, that consists of people that are smarter in areas than I am. We say this a lot at the chapel. If you're the smartest in the room, you've got a problem. If you're consistently the smartest in the room, you've got a big problem. Um, so I try to learn every day. Uh, day. Day one through six was pretty horrible. I mean, I, I mean it was like to a point where... If somebody looked at me the wrong way, I'm just going to pounce you into the ground. I mean, that's just the reality. I mean, it was tough. And, and I started a little earlier than everybody else just to kind of get a, a ramp and a running start. So that Sunday, you know, which was Super Bowl Sunday, you know, I was already into it for about two or three days. And, and I had a caffeine headache. I, I have no idea what I preached about that Sunday. It was like, well, I don't even know. My head is pounding so bad. Um, what I realized about the fast was that the crave, we called it the crave, Fast, the Crave series that we've been in, removing something that cost us something and replacing it with more reading of God's word and more prayer. Uh, the sanctuary was open uh, for three weeks from 4 to 8 o'clock and people were coming in and out reading just to try to create an atmosphere, you know, for people. And uh, what I realized was something about a behavior, something about how we live, something about how we uh, conduct ourselves, especially me. What I realized was you have this crave thing, we were calling it a fast, and the crave fast was so important to us all, so important to me, that every single thing that I did centered around, centered around the crave fast, 
Where am I going to go? What's this going to look like? Who's going to be there? Am I going to be, okay, how much food are they going to be? Do not be in Panera on a fast when they yell hot bread. Don't do that. Every single thing that I did and how I conducted myself, here we go, from the time I got up in the morning, it was a whole different, we had to go shopping. We had to go like different food shopping. It was like, it was a whole fruits and vegetables. I don't even want to see, I don't want to see an apple for months. I mean, the, the whole thing, the whole idea of raising the value, here we go, of raising the value of fasting to lean more into who God is and who he created us to be, the whole idea of valuing, raising the value of the fast dictated everything I thought about and everywhere I went. Because it was, well, who's going to be there? What are they going to be eating? I don't know if I could withstand it. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can. Do Every single thing. Why? Because we took the crave fast and we gave it a value. We gave it this high value in our life. And everything we did, everything we said. At one point in the office, people were talking about food. And I'm like, everybody shut up. Because I can't do it. I can't, I can't concentrate. Stop talking about food. Everything we did, everywhere we went, everything I thought about, everywhere, every place I went to, every single thing was centered around, reflected the value that I raised in my life. The value of saying for 21 days, I'm going to crave more of you, God, than even food. And it started with Determining in my mind this thing, which was the fast, this thing, which is the fast, that's going to be a higher value than anything else. Going to have a meeting. He'll meet you at Starbucks. Let's just meet in the office. Dictated my behavior. Almost wouldn't have went to the lightning game, but they were, they were just really good seats. So it was like... But I almost was like, I, don't, I went with my wife, Trish, and I was like, I don't, I don't know if we can do it. I mean, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know. And I'm like sitting there between, first of all, intermission on a fast in a hockey game is like going to the seventh layer of hell. I mean, you're just like, you're just sitting there. I'm, I'm tweeting. I'm, I'm checking emails because I'm just trying. My behavior changed because of the value that I raised in my life. That value being the 21 days of fasting. That value that I raised in my life dictated my thinking, my behavior, where I went, who I was with. I didn't have any meetings with people who really loved food like I did. None. Because it was like, this is terrible. You know, last week we had Pastor Derek from Connect Community Church in Boston speak. And he was ruthless. He's ruthless. He knows we're in the fast. That's why I bought him in. He's really great at speaking about stuff like that. He's really knowledgeable about it. He didn't, it wasn't even a thought. He's like, yeah, you're fasting, baby. I'm not. It was horrible. But the idea of raising that value in my life to this level, I'm going to tell you, I just, I just noticed something. What we value is reflected in the lives we live. What we value is reflected in the lives we live. If you value something, it reflects in your behavior. If you want to see what somebody values, look at their life. If you want to see what somebody values in their life, look at what they talk about. Look at how they act. Look at how they behave. If you want to see what somebody values in their life, I would even say, look at where they spend their money. Look at where they spend their time. If you want to know what somebody values, and for those three weeks... A lot of us, a lot of us raise the value of removing something that costs us something and replacing it with more of God in the form of reading, his, reading the Bible more, praying more, setting time aside. And what I realized about myself, and maybe, maybe as a pastor, maybe I should have known this years and years ago. I, I don't know. But it was like... I can't remember another time when a decision that I made affected me so greatly. 
other than giving my heart to Christ. Other than going, I, I want to I follow God. And what we value comes out in our speech. What we value, really, really, our life is a reflection. Our life is a reflection of our value system. How we walk, how we talk, who we hang around, what we do, what we spend our money on, what, whatever that is. It's really reflective of what's, it's really a reflection of what's going on in the inside. And for those three weeks, for those three, and I'm going to tell you, well, I'll tell you about that later. For those three weeks, our lives, your life, my life, at whatever level we sacrificed, at whatever level that we removed something that cost us something and replaced it with his word and praying more, at whatever level that is, we raise the value. Our life reflects. Our life reflects what we value. Let me go something. Let me do something here. Look at this scripture. James chapter 1, verse 23. Anyone, the writer here, author James, half-brother of Jesus... Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. How is that possible? How is that possible that you look into a mirror? How is that possible you look into a mirror and you forget what you look like? I mean, look, I know we all get crazy if we don't have caffeine. Some of us, our behaviors have completely changed in 21 days because we've deprived ourselves, deprived ourselves of some great, great food. But I don't know of a person that looks into a mirror and then they walk away and they forget themselves. See, those 21 days, we elevated the crave fast. In those 21 days, we elevated the importance. We elevated the, pro we made crave a priority and it dictated what what we said where we went who we were around it dictated our behavior hmm. interesting James says here anyone who looks anyone who listens to the word it's like a man who looks in a mirror and he forgets what he looks like what James is saying is a mirror. A mirror reflects all of us own a mirror. All of us do this little deal. This, this is pretty good. This is all right. My goodness, look at that white hair. My goodness. Did I lose some weight? Oh, my gosh. Portly. Portly. Portly I am. I'm a little portly. That's what it is. What is it? That we all do that. We look in. But what's the function of a mirror? What's the function of a mirror? It's to assess. It's to look into the mirror, to size up, to look at, to adjust. We all look in the mirror and we all, we just adjust things. We think this shirt fits good. We think it feels good. But we go to the mirror to reflect, do, does the shirt really look as good as I think? Let me check. Oh, wait. A little button issue right here. Whoa. You don't want to see that. Hold on. We just adjust. That's what we do. We just adjust it. We just adjust ourselves. We look into the mirror when we get up in the morning. Everybody wave because that's freaky right now. Look at that. That's a little weird right now. That's freaky. All right. That's what we do. The mirror serves. The mirror serves us. Because we look into the mirror and we say, well, how are we supposed It sizes us up. It either validates what we believe to be true or it disqualifies our beliefs. Wash my hair, blue dry, put a little mousse, put a little hairspray. Let me check it. Let me check how it looks. Now, not in a vain, conceited way. I just want to see how I look. What it is, is it's a tool. What the writer here says is, that's God's word. See, that's God's word. It's because the man who looks into the mirror, God's word, 
and doesn't use it to adjust himself, doesn't use it to reflect back what's being put in front of it. It's like a guy who looks in the mirror and walks away, forgets what he looks like. See, what the writer here, James, does is says, just like you raise the crave fast for 21 days and everything, it was a lens, every single thing, your thought, your behavior, who you were with, where you went, was dictated by the decision that you made in your mind. I'm going to fast for 21 days. Well, James here, the writer, Jesus' half-brother says, well, the mirror is the same way. You want to know how you're looking. You want to know how you're doing. Look into the mirror. And it will reflect. I mean, what does it do? It removes some dirt. You adjust a little bit. Well, this doesn't look as good as I thought it looked. Well, I, don't, I'm not, I didn't lose as much weight as I thought. I didn't. What it does, what James is saying is you look into God's word. To adjust yourself. You look into God's word. You look into, that's why he's using the word mirror. You look into it to reflect back. Where do I need adjustment? You look into the mirror to go, am I, does this look, is this part of my life? This sixth section of my life, this part of my life, is it, is it as good as I thought? What's going to shine back is the truth. You think your hair looks good, you need a haircut. You think your hair looks good, stop using a mousse. You think you lost a light weight, you think you lost a lot of weight, buy bigger pants. Do something. The mirror reflects back the truth. And you see the writer here, James, says, where are you looking? What reflection are you looking at? Because the mirror is that tool to adjust your life. God's word. And this is what I didn't forget in the fast, but for, again, for me, we got to not look to anything else that adjusts our life, that gets us in the right perspective, that puts things in its place, that defines who we are, that gives us guidance and direction. We don't need to look anywhere else other than his holy scripture. That's what James says. Where are you looking where are you reflecting? We, what James is saying, just like you raised the, the, the fast for 21 days and it dictated the word of God should dictate that to you every single day. Who you are, what you were created for. It's a reflection. A life lived is a reflection of our value, of what we value. So do we value more what people say about us, what people say we should do in a situation, how people say we should act and treat one another in a situation? Do we value that more? Do we value going, I'm going to a lightning game, even though I said 21-day fast, bring on the bratwurst, bring on the peanuts, you know, the ones that are like caramelized and the sugar, you get them over there. They're just these nuts, these almonds, they're sugar. Not, anyway, so what, what are you going to value more? What are you going to value? And James here says, the mirror is the word of God. What is the word? What does God's word say about God's creation? That's what I want you to get. What does God's word say about God's creation? Because that's the thing that's supposed to guide, shape, and mold us. That's the thing that keeps just pounding in my head about our church. I don't really care. I don't really think you guys care what I think. And trust me, I'm not stuck on myself so much that I'm going to tell you what I think. I just want to tell you what God's word says about a situation. That's it. That's it. If there's anything that we're going to reflect and see ourselves in, to adjust, to get ourselves right, to check ourselves, to clean up spots that need to be cleaned, James says it's God's word. And it's God's word that dictates the behavior. It's God's word that dictates the language. It's God's word that dictates the people that that we bring close to our life. It's God's word that dictates where you go, when you go, how you should go. Just like 
the 21 days. It's the value. So the question becomes, do you value, do we value what God's word says about who we are? Or are we valuing more what people think? Are we valuing more what people think? That's it. There's no other way to say it. And James brings out a great point, just gives us a, a metaphor. It's, that's how you forget. That's how a person looks in a mirror and then turns away and forgets what he looks like. Because he didn't use the mirror for the purpose it was intended. God's word. I love talking to people about, love talking to people, period. I love talking to people about Christianity and following Jesus. And they're like, if I do this, 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 am I a Christian? And then you talk to other people that turn around and go, well, if I don't do this, and I don't do that, and I don't do this, and I don't, well, then am I a Christian? Look at, look, look at the mirror. Look in the mirror. You're a Christian because you say he is God and I am not. You're a Christian because you say, Lord, I want you to be Lord of my life. Because I got this dirt and the filth in my life, and I got things that I don't want to do in my life. And I looked into the mirror, and it says that I wasn't created for this. It says in the mirror that I wasn't built to do this. It says in the mirror that I wasn't supposed to say this. It says in the mirror that I'm not supposed to behave like this in this situation. And God's word is elevated. The Bible is elevated. It's the guide and the compass and the map for his creation. And what James says is, hey, uh, when you look in a mirror and you walk away, it's a person who hears the word and doesn't do it. It's like someone who looks in a mirror and they walk away and they just forget what they look like because they didn't use the mirror for the purpose it was intended. Communion, Brandon and Kalisha are going to come out and and play a little bit while we reflect, while we reflect on our lives. And communion is a reflection. I think we forget that. Communion is a reflection <laughs> of a behavior. Communion is a reflection of a behavior of our Savior. It's a reflection of his behavior that says my behavior is going to communicate, is going to reflect how much I love you. Communion, what communion does is it's a, be, it's a reflection and a behavior that shows you and tells you. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why. In Scripture it says, when you do this, do this in remembrance of me. It wasn't an option. Because what it is, it turns into a reflection of, I value you. I value you and you're important to me. Maybe that's why when we read in scriptures about believers and followers of Christ, he says, when you fast. Again, not an option. Because when you fast and you deprive and you take something away and replace it with more of God, you elevate and you begin and it gets it right back down to basics. Right down to the basic stuff. You would die and you'd never live eternally without a Savior who valued you so much that he died for every sin that would keep you out of heaven. Done. It's not complicated. And that's why fasting, when you fast, the Savior says, teaches the disciples when you fast, because all of a sudden it centers you again, and you realize, I, I raised this thing up, this fast, just like, and it reminds me what Scripture says in James, to look at yourself in light of Look at your reflection as the word being the mirror. What does the word say about you? What does the word say about your life, your situation? What does the word say about the way you conduct your business and your mouth? What does the word say about who you are? What does the word say about what you can and cannot do? What does the word say about how precious you are in the creator's sight? What does the word say? And so we have a reflection, and it's called communion. Communion, a reflection of our Savior saying to us, you're valuable. You're valuable. You're valuable. And when you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Because my behavior, listen, my behavior was dictated. Like the crave fast, 
dictated our behavior and the way we walked and talked and what we ate and what we went around. Jesus says, my behavior is dictated by my values. My life is a reflection of my values and what I value is you. And what I value is you. You can't do anything that'll make me stop valuing you. This whole life centered around the ability for you to have an opportunity to have a relationship with him. Like the crave fast behavior was raised in value in our lives and it dictated everything, Jesus turns around and says, I was... That was, it. that was me. My whole life. My whole life is dictated to the things I value. So as Brandon and Kalisha sing, we take the bread as a, as, a, as a symbol of his body. We dip it into the cup as a symbol of his blood for the forgiveness of all sins. And we just sit and we reflect. Lord, I I, I need help in this area. We reflect. Lord, I'm I'm not getting this part of my life. We look, communion is like looking into the mirror. Communion is like looking into the mirror going, yeah, that's, I gotta gotta have help with that. Lord, I, I gotta have forgiveness for this. And because I don't wanna do the same thing over and over, I need your power. See, communion is a reflection. That's why to believers, to believers, he says, when you do this, you do this in remembrance of me, a life lived where he lived his life based on a value and that value is so that you would have a relationship with him. So as we sing this song, you talk to your heavenly father and just wait a moment. Because maybe he wants to say something to you, to his creation, about how you need help, about how you need forgiveness in area, in an area. Amen.